Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video, we're going to be doing a 50 gallon water change on the 300 gallon reef. My plan is to show you everything from beginning to end, cleaning the 40 gallon shallow reef, which has some cyanobacteria in it, to cleaning the 50 gallon low boy frag tank, which I sell out of. And of course, going over to the 300, cleaning out that detritus and, uh, and doing some bubble scrubbing, all that good stuff. So uh, stick around if this is your first time here on the channel. I appreciate you uh, subscribing and hitting the thumbs up. Um, that'll all that stuff helps me move uh, throughout the community so i appreciate that and uh yeah with all that crap out of the way let's go ahead and uh, get started now a water change for me is usually between 30 and 50 gallons that's because i have a 55 gallon mixing drum which you guys have seen in my rldi mixing videos and i have a 55 gallon drain drum if that's what you want to call it which i collect all the water from the system and then have it pumped out to the drainage ditch in the back of my house and uh, so obviously I don't really like to make more water than I have to. And being only that I can make 55 gallons max, I usually stick around that 50 gallon mark just to have extra water for uh, doing GFO and just kind of general maintenance in the sump that requires me to remove a little extra water. So uh, just a little heads up on that. Now, when it comes to these tanks, uh, they don't really need a water change. There really isn't a uh, direct uh, need for adding micronutrients and all that stuff because I already do that through dosing every week, but they definitely need to have the detritus removed and that's really the whole point behind doing them. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I like to do with any water change is clean the glass. Now, there's a couple reasons behind this. One, I want to be able to see into the tank, and sometimes I let my tanks go a while and you can't even see through them. I uh, guess it's part of being lazy, I suppose. Uh, the second reason is I want to make sure that all the stuff that I am scraping off the glass gets into the water column and can be siphoned out during that process. And then the third reason, which is probably the most important, is I want to make sure I'm not uh, mixing anything up from the bottom of the tank before I clean the glass. That way, I'm not getting any sand particles or detritus between the magnet and the glass and potentially scraping the tank. So uh, those are my reasons for cleaning the glass first. And since I've been doing that, I haven't really had any issues with scratching the tank. So as you guys can see, the shallow reef is pretty dirty. Honestly, I haven't done anything with this tank in a few weeks. Um, with everything going on, I just haven't gotten in here and cleaned the glass or even messed with uh, the cyanobacteria, which has slowly come up over the last couple weeks because my power head, which is an MP10, has pretty much shit the bed. Um, I've changed out the prop. The motor's starting to get loud. Um, I've cleaned it, all that good stuff, and it just still doesn't want to work very well. So I end up tossing that in the trash and replacing it with a PP8, which you guys will see later on. Now, the cyanobacteria is pretty common when I'm making adjustments to my food, which I do make here in-house. And... Um, I'm trying a different batch and different types of stuff, so I am adjusting what my levels are. Right now, I'm at 0.15 of phosphates and about 4 ppm of um, nitrates. So my levels aren't too high, but if you still get dead spots in your tank, this, even with the phosphates being up at that range, you can still start to grow a little bit of cyanobacteria, and that's exactly what has happened here in this tank. And uh, it's easily removed with siphoning and increasing the flow. It takes care of itself uh, relatively quickly. All right, now that we're done with the shallow reef, let's go ahead and quickly clean the 50-gallon low boy. Now, it's safe to say that I don't clean it too often given how much coralline algae is growing on it. And the reason is I just don't feel comfortable putting excess pressure on the glass. Uh, don't get me wrong. These tanks are great for holding uh, water, holding frags, holding coral in general. Uh, they're easy to drill, and they're relatively cheap to get. But um, if you don't have a stand that's level or there's pressure or pinch points anywhere in the stand or if you happen to just bang it off the wall a little bit, you'll break the whole damn tank because I've done that several times over the last couple of years. So, uh, yeah, given I did bring it, I did bang it off the wall, but it wasn't that hard. So it at least give me a little leeway on that. Uh, so all said and done, I just don't feel comfortable messing with these tanks. So that's really why I just kind of leave this one as is. And when I add the other two from the imported system to the system for my grow out, um, I'm going to do the same thing, probably not clean the glass and just let them uh, do their own thing. All right, finally, last but not least, the 300 gallon. Now I am gonna be using the Tiger Shark float here. Uh, this magnet cleaner is not the cheapest in the world, but it works really, really well. And I, of course, use the blade attachment and uh, it just, it's time consuming. It's an eight foot tank by two foot wide by 30 inches tall. And if you wanna get all the coralline algae and the algae out of the nooks and crannies, it just takes a while. So it's, it's something I do probably once a week just so I can create content. And uh, if I didn't have to make YouTube videos, I probably wouldn't clean the glass, to be honest with you, because uh, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, the snails take care of stuff. And it, again, the tank doesn't really get that dirty over a couple weeks. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna fast forward everything. Once we're done with that, let's go ahead and move on to siphoning out and removing some detritus. 
So as I mentioned before, one of the main reasons behind doing these water changes is to remove detritus. It makes it very easy with a bare bottom tank. And as you guys can see, we have cyano, which is, again is going to be removed relatively easily during the siphoning process. And uh, as I mentioned before, bare bottom is really the way that I like to go, not only because it's easy to clean, but you can have a lot of extra flow. You can put frags on the bottom of the tank and not worry about them getting covered in sand. And now, of course, there are drawbacks with uh, biological filtration and you can't have certain types of crit because of the sand but uh, yeah I love having bare bottom tanks and as you guys can see it's really easy to go ahead and remove this cyanobacteria and all the detritus within this tank so when it comes down to how much water I actually siphon out of this particular tank given that it's all one water volume really comes down to how much detritus and in this case how much cyanobacteria needs to be removed now during this particular water change I end up taking about 20 gallons out which is totally fine because that gives us about 30 to 35 gallons to work with in the 300 and that's more than enough to get in there and siphon out that detritus. All right, now that we're done with the shallow reef, let's go ahead and move over to the 300 gallon. So the first thing I like to do is get in here and move some of these corals around and get into all the crevices with these pliers. Uh, basically what I use them for is to kind of mix up the detritus that sticks in some of the dead spots. And it's really easy. They, they have this little bend on them. Uh, one of my subscribers actually got them for me at Reef of Palooza um, a couple years ago, I believe. And um, I use these every time I do a water change to just simply get in there. And you can see that I'm mixing up this detritus relatively quickly. And it just kind of gets it out from underneath the rocks so it's easy to siphon out now i will say that this is definitely a time consuming and tedious process and it is something that is well worth it in the end if you're willing to put the time in a, having a very clean detritus free uh, bare bottom tank is always something that i strive for and it definitely looks good when you're finished now i will say if you are starting to do this or you want to do this for the first time i would leave your return pump on but turn your power heads off that way if it takes longer than you anticipate you don't have to worry about the temperature of the tank dropping down but because i have such a large water volume the temperature down here is pretty stable i don't really have to worry about it and i can keep the tank off for 30 or 40 minutes without having any issues with temperature. All right, now that we're done with that, let's go to move on to the easy part, which is just simply siphoning out all the detritus that we removed from underneath the rocks. Now, this is, a again, the easiest part of the whole entire process and usually takes about five to 10 minutes, depending on how many snail shells I get stuck inside that hose. Now, the reason why I keep this size hose instead of going bigger is I don't want to take a chance of sucking up any fish or my starfish or anything like that. So this is a one inch uh, hose that I picked up from Home Depot. And yes, the little turbo snails get stuck in it, but I'd rather do that than ended up ripping off a leg of one of my starfish or getting one of my fish stuck in it. So, uh, yep takes about uh, 10 to 15 minutes relatively easy and we can move on to the bubble scrubbing so if you guys have been here for a while you probably see me do bubble scrubbing in the past with the 125 and, and even a couple videos here on the 300 now I'm a really big fan of this I find it to be uh, quite beneficial for my Acropora now I don't really use it for any other corals uh, like soft corals or uh, you know, LPS or anything like that I don't really find it to be that beneficial but for acros, I feel that the bubbles being added to the tank really help release that mucous membrane, get it up at the top of the tank, which you guys will see here in a second, and just help overall clean the corals and remove detritus that might be stuck in the water column. Now, if you're trying bubble scrubbing for the first time and you see this here, which is just simply the mucus being lifted up off of your acros, don't freak out. It's not a bad thing. They're not stressed. They're not hurt. This is just part of the overall process. And one thing you will notice is within 24 to 48 hours, you will notice that the uh, polyp extension is going to be a lot better on your acros. The tank is going to be clearer and cleaner looking and just overall a happier system. So that's why I try to do this every time I do a water change, at least on the big tank. I'm not really worried about it at this point on the 40 gallon because there's not a ton of coral in there, but I probably will implement that later on when we start getting some actual colonies growing in that tank. Now, during this entire process, there is one thing that I have to keep an eye on, and that is this staghorn that sticks out of the top of the tank. Now, I just come in here every 10 to 15 minutes and just pour a few cups of water onto it just to make sure it stays wet and doesn't dry out and eventually, you know, die off. Now, I will end up having to cut this coral back probably within the next uh, month or two because it's just simply growing too far up and it is starting to die at the tips just because it is being exposed pretty much all the time now. Now, when it comes down to how long I spend bubble scrubbing is determined by how much time it took to actually complete the previous task, i.e. cleaning the 40 gallon and also cleaning and removing all the detritus from the 300. Now, if it's been about 30 to 40 minutes, I'll spend about 10 to 15 more minutes just bubble scrubbing before I eventually fill up the tank with freshly mixed salt water. 
Now, what's really cool about after you're done bubble scrubbing and you're filling up the tank, you can really see that mucus starting to get lifted up and go to the surface of the water, which is going to play a pretty big role in removal here in a second. Now, what happens is the tank will fill up, of course. I won't turn on the power heads or the return pump quite yet. I'll wait until it starts to get to the point where it's going to overflow and then wait for all of the mucus and everything that was collected at the top to go down into the overflow and into my filter socks before I eventually turn on the return pump pump and the power heads. Now once I'm done with that and the tank is up and running and temperature is stable, I'll go ahead and get in here and change out my carbon or any other media that I might be using at that time. In this instance I just have carbon going and again I only change it once per month and it just kind of goes with my water change. I am using the ROX 0.8 from Bulk Reef Supply for anybody who is wondering what type I use and uh, it's really easy to do that here on the Geo Sump and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it when it comes to the water change. Um, there's a couple other things that I might do depending on how how long it's been like clean the skimmer clean the return pumps might get in there and remove some macroalgae even clean out the sponge between the chambers change filter socks it just depends on kind of how it falls in to my water change schedule and if it needs to be taken care of but uh yeah so that's about it for the video if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comment section below uh, don't forget to like the video and of course subscribe and uh, hopefully i'll see you guys next week with a couple more videos i do have a few in the works plus we're starting to work on tearing down the imported system as you guys probably know by now i have um stopped Stopped importing coral altogether. I'm just going to be moving into uh, grown in-house and I've already made some changes to the website uh, which is fishofhex.com for those of you who are new to the channel and uh, I'm just going to be doing WYSIWYG, SPS and what LPS I do have and of course we'll be adding to that as I get corals in quarantined and grown out. So uh, that's about it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later. Peace.